But from a business perspective, I think ultimately we, you can look at this as the the game is the performance that in a business that if you were at a pitch competition or you were at a networking event, that's a that that game, the physical game that they're playing is what you would be consuming or doing as a business in the same way that your performance is. And so you went to like a pitch right. last night, you, you were a judge at a, um, um, a pitch competition last night. You and I have both been attended, pitched ourselves at, at, at many of these things, probably hundreds um, in some form o- over the years. A- and, you know, it's interesting at those type of events, I feel like you have to be gregarious in some sort of way or be so concise about something that everyone can hear for you to actually win. I don't think that's always the case in business, but at a place right. when you're on stage, I mean, do you agree, disagree on that? Like, No, I totally agree. Uh, and it's, yeah, I mean, you've, that's one of the things like even before us doing this show or anytime that I'm on zoom or if I, any television stuff that I've done, I feel like I, I, I try to turn up the, the, animation and then i'll watch the replay and i still look and Turn feel as if i'm so robotic and i'm like yeah so do you think you've gotten better at yourself at that kind of stuff i like, definitely the- uh i feel i feel a lot more comfortable than i did before because yeah. in the past but even you were probably a little i don't think you're a shy person but i think that like this wasn't your thing Right. So it was trying to get comfortable in it to. to... Yeah. And, and I think that it would be really helpful just to, to have someone coach you through it because of me being never doing it before, like even doing your show for the first time, however many years ago that was. It's like. Oh, on Hampton yeah, Roads I, Business Weekly for the first time? Yeah, yeah. 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 And it was like one of those deals where I'm like, am I supposed to look at the camera? Am I not supposed to look at the camera? What am I supposed to do? You know, those little things that, you know, that, that preoccupied my mind. So I was thinking about those things as opposed to, all right, that's how can we turn this up and, and make this more enjoyable or entertaining? So hearing that, is it just that, is there is there any way to prepare for that? Is it like just ask a lot of questions beforehand? Like what to expect, how to do this, how to do this? Yeah. As the and host, I, now, like, I feel like it's my job to tell you, the producers, whatever, to say, hey, this is what to expect. But as a business owner, when I go into a thing, like I remember I coached a guy once and uh, we were the whole thing was for performances. And I, and he was telling me all the things that were going wrong or he didn't like. And I'm like, oh, well, uh, ha- don't just get on stage. Have them turn the light on that's going to be on you so you don't know how. So you know how bright that is for it right. beforehand. What kind of microphone are you going to use? Understand where your slides are. Are you going to have a mirrored presentation television? Like there's all these things that like people just get on and they're like, Oh, I wasn't expecting that. And to me, it's like, those are questions that, or those are things that you can learn beforehand so that when the thing does happen, you're not like, Oh, Oklahoma, where the wind blows, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, the, I mean, it's amazing to me. Sitting no. on that show. Yeah. And that was yeah, like 100%. Minutes of recording. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, before the different pitch events that we would have, I mean, before every single pitcher would get uh, go on stage to do their pitch, one of the things we would do is beforehand, we would go ahead and we would allow them the opportunity to practice with the clicker, practice holding the microphone, do all the things that they would need to do beforehand to get comfortable so that when they do go on stage to perform, they can just focus on performing. That's all they have to do. And it amazes me, even last night, how – clickers didn't work and then that detracted from the pitch or the microphone was in the microphone stand and they started to walk away from the microphone and then their voice went out those different things i mean it's just it's practice 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 and the way that you practice or if you don't practice when you do do it for the first time it shows Mm. it's it's um it's interesting I hate that word, but like, so how you, you said you like amp yourself up to like, to try to be more gregarious or I mean, gregarious. Well, just because it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's when you see like, uh, like a, a Ryan Seacrest on American Idol and they're just, you know, not like waving their arms or anything, but they're, they're the voice inflections and I mean, everything just looks really natural, uh, 
Whereas I'll go back and look at replays of myself and I feel as if I'm really, really stiff, but I, while I'm doing it, I feel like I'm much more animated than I normally ever am when I'm talking to someone. But what, what, what's interesting to me in that situation is that how could someone not think that those like Ryan Seacrest isn't practicing like crazy? Oh, for sure. For sure. Right. Like again, We've talked about this a billion times. I got a rock poster behind me. WWE, their matches, like a lot of times, they're walking them through beforehand. They're big events. They're walking through each and every aspect of those things. So that, again, it's not the thing the first time. So how can you look at these big monumental things that are making hundreds of millions, even just tens of thousands of dollars, what are they doing to make the show better for the audience? And what are you willing to do as the performer in this case, right? The person that's going to be on stage. And that's why, you know, we, we learned this from um, uh, Mr. Gary Plage, who I <laughs> clearly <laughs> does not, can't say a he's, not, he's, 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 he's not he watching this. North, anyway. North Carolina now. Who cares? He'll be fine. All right. Um, Gary would tell us, you know, their performances. And the first time I heard him say that it was probably six years ago. I don't even know that I've known him for six years, but let's say that it is. I was like, oh, that's interesting because that's exactly what it is. And more people need to treat these things like performances, even their business calls, their business meetings with people. Every single aspect of it is you're the performer. You have an audience consuming you. It, it's it's important in that case. I think that the, the number one takeaway when it comes to this type of performance thing is that people spend 95% of their time on slides and 5% on what they're going to say. And at the, at the end of the performance, people are going to remember 95. Well, you're going to hope that they remember 95% of your performance and only 5% of your slides. So people totally inverse where they need to put their focus. I think people, if you're going to have slides, I'm not a big slide guy, zero words, and just pictures, and they should be a supplement right. to what you are doing as the um, performer. So well, I think that the, uh, the other thing that I found really interesting was, you know, when it's campaign season with politicians and entrepreneurship seems to be a hot topic, and you and I are really involved with entrepreneurship in the area. So then you would have politicians that would want to come and show everybody that they're involved in entrepreneurship right. and they support you. Well, we would see them at these different events and the speech is exactly the same thing over and over and over again. The only thing different is this location yeah, versus this location. So it's and interesting. Everything, ever, it's been practiced thousands of times. The content is the constant. The variable is the audience. Most people do the opposite of that or do double variables, in my opinion. So they constantly change the content and they're constantly changing the audience. When, if you think about what that also is, right? I Now, concerts are back, right? We had that. Who was the, um, you, and you saw, you guys saw him recently. Who was the guy that you saw? Let's give a shout out to him. The guy who was on our show. Oh, yeah. Sammy, Sammy Lee. Sam, Sammy Lee is back performing, right? Sammy yep. most likely is going, and he would say this too, right? He's going to do the exact same performance tonight that he's going to do tomorrow that's going to do in three weeks, right? Yes, there's little tweaks there, but the set list is going to be exactly the same, right? So he's comfortable with it. He can practice that. What's going to change? The audience is going to change. Right. So if you are listening and you're trying to figure out how do I get better at it, do the same thing over and over again. Over and over and over again. I would be willing to bet that Joe Rogan or any other really popular podcast could likely say the exact same thing for a series of days and not one person would complain. Well, and I think that, you know, speaking of Joe Rogan, that's the thing that would be really difficult because as a comedian, they have to tell the same jokes every single night. Yeah, they could not change that variable. Well, that's why they don't want come recordings up with, in those situations. Right. So that, that stuff doesn't get out. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't be a comedian and be selling out arenas and having, I mean, they have to test that material out for weeks, if not months in advance to tweak words and timing and all of that thing. So I mean, Dave so Ch it's just. Dave Chappelle will talk about that as like, that's something where he has to go out and test it, figure out what's working, what's not. Uh, some people think it works or, or something doesn't seem to work in that kind of situation. So it's, that's the real thing. Um, Senior Gavin Anderson, 
Like what's a situation that you've personally been in that's going around what we're talking about or uh, that you've seen a, a good or bad performance that you thought was like, oh, that, that actually worked out pretty well. Is there, as we're talking, is there something that you think about? I mean, what comes to my mind is just like presentations in school. I mean, I'm fresh out of school. So, you know, you see a ton of presentations and I think you learn the most, you know, when you're not presenting, uh, you see what people are doing wrong. And most people just kind of doze off during that, during that point. But I think the ones that really focus in and, kind of critique the other groups, you know, they learn a lot for themselves and you kind of learn what not to do when you get up there. So you have to practice it. You can't just get up there without. Well, you have and, to and watch others too, I think. Um, I mean, just watch yeah. guys every week, you know, how you lead in questions, how you answer questions. How well, I the, uh, the other takeaway that I get from what you're saying, Gavin, is that you, you learn from screwing up more than you will learn from doing a good job. Yeah, hopefully if you screw up during a presentation, you're not going to make the same mistake a second or a third time. Yeah, you're going to remember that bad feeling, you know, way more than you remember that good feeling. So, you know, you fumble your words or you get up there and forget what you're going to say. You learn exactly why that happened. It's never it's never going to happen again to you. And the same holds true uh, in business. I mean, you can do all the different proposals. You can try to win all kinds of work. And when you win that work, you don't ever you don't ever think about it again. You're just on to the win. You want to do, deliver the product or whatever it is that you have to do to fulfill the agreement. And then you move on to the next one. So you don't necessarily learn anything. But if you put a proposal in or you didn't close a deal, then you look back and you learn at what you did or didn't do. And uh, don't tweak a ton of it. Just tweak one little aspect of it. I think it's so important. Uh, so I found oh, this. Is this, this my... Is uh, this is, I believe, the first one. Let me yeah. know if you guys can hear the sound. Can you hear the sound? I don't hear anything. No. Uh, yeah. Wonder how to do that. I, yeah, and like the, the saving grace behind when that aired was uh, I was running the One City Marathon during that, so I didn't have to be. Uh, I, I just I, I had the DVR set, and I and I want to say that it took me a, a, a couple weeks before I even wanted you to sit down and watch that well but, you did you did good uh if people could hear it i wonder how to do this all right you guys start talk, doing it i'm gonna figure out how to do this y'all chat are you stuck at yeah. your home office socially distanced coffee shop or your fancy all bricked out corner office wondering why no one can see your business and sales are all over the place sounds like you need a pro that's why i developed the anomaly academy Insert clever copy here. Oh, I guess I was supposed to put something else there. Oops. You can grab access to the Anomaly Academy now at ZachMillerSays.com slash Anomaly Academy.